In this presentation, I will be going over text complexity, what it is, and why we should bother even using it in our classroom. And this is a very nice follow up to the readings for this week on text complexity and selecting texts, as well as the video by Sarah Brown Wessling that went into detail discussing text complexity and how to use it to present more increasingly complex texts in your classroom. So know that this is building on that and make sure to do the readings and view the video before doing this. Otherwise, many, much of this might not make sense. All right, so let's get go ahead and get started. One of the activities that you might want to do as we go along through this lecture is to fill out a questions before, during, and after sheet. I have this linked on the agenda for session four if you'd like to do this activity as we go along. It's um, the main purpose is to use questioning, active questioning to support comprehension. And so this is an activity that you could do in your classroom. So you can try it out with this mini lecture if you want. And I have it paired with this lecture because this lecture is pretty dense in learning new concepts and thinking about how to apply them. So this structural support might actually help in comprehension for you as well, for adult learners as well. So feel free to use that tool just to get a feel for it if you'd like. So some of the core concepts that I'd like you to take from this lecture are, first of all, text complexity. What is it and what are the three dimensions and how might I use these three dimensions to analyze a text and best support it in the classroom and match it with students. Then I provide some different tools for assisting in this text analysis. And then all of this relates then to the idea of productive struggle. How can text complexity be used to design learning opportunities of productive struggle rather than struggle that is just too much and students then opt out. So those are the key concepts that I hope hopefully hopefully you will take from this um, lecture. All right, so text complexity. What is it? First of all, text complexity is not just another way to level books like a Lexile score or certain A to Z reading levels, etc. So those forms focus specifically on just the text and elements in the text. So this um, text complexity is just not another name for that. Those components are included in text complexity, but text complexity is actually a more broad approach to analyzing text that considers not only the text, and the number of words and the lengths of sentences, but also the knowledge demands, the prior knowledge demands that it is placing on the reader, so elements of the reader in terms of their motivation and their purpose, and also how the text is being used, the task and what you're having students do with the text. So it's a broader way to consider the complexity of reading and comprehension that's looking beyond just the text. So one way to look at that might be to look at comprehension as a multi-layered process. So you have the text here in the center, um, and that has a variety of factors that can help us understand the difficulty of it. But that difficulty is also very much influenced by the reader, this second circle. Um, a reader who has much motivation and high interest in a topic can take on a more difficult task or more difficult text. And then also, lar even a larger consideration is the context. How is this text being used? Is the text, are students just reading the text to get general information, so it's a more of a simple task? Or are students actually being asked to analyze this text in depth and synthesize it with other similarly complex texts? Um, the context, so the context in terms of like the, ta the task, what students are being asked to do very much impacts the, com the level of comprehension as well. And keeping in, in consideration all these different elements can help you best match the text and task with the reader. So, Going into then the three dimensions of text complexity, uh, they are att attempting to address those three different layers of comprehension. So there are the qualitative elements, the quantitative elements, and the reader and task elements. And we're gonna go through each of those individually now. So first of all, there are the quantitative elements. So quantitative, if you can think of that as referring to quantity, these are numerical factors. So aspects that can be measured, and oftentimes they are measured by computer programs. So that's um, programs that are me measuring the word length, the average word length in the text, the word frequency, how frequently certain words are repeated, the difficulty level of the words, the sentence lengths, are they very long sentences with 20 plus words on average, or are they more short sentences with two to three words on average? What's the length of the text? And then text cohesion too. So these are different formulas that they use to analyze the 
difficulty of the text based on these measures, but these measures don't take any consideration of the reader. So these are just based in the text. So going back to this, this chart right here, they're really focusing on just the text. So these are, as I said before, typically measured by computer programs. So I don't want you to get out your pencil and start putting dots and counting all the words. That's how it used to be done, but now we have computer programs and to do this for us. And I will be sharing some of those tools with you um, below in the agenda, and you can use those as well to do some analyzing. Then there are the qualitative elements. These are the aspects that are not numerical. They are aspects that are evaluated by a human reader. And so, and these are a lot of the factors that are taking into consideration the reader. So a text may have various levels of meaning. There might be very mature themes in the text. There might, the genre of the text might be unique. It might be, for example, poetry. The, the poetry structure of a text can make a text much more difficult for a student to access. And then there are knowledge demands of a text as well. Knowledge demands are the prior knowledge that it assumes the reader has. So when reading a text about the Voting Act, they might need to know about previous voting acts, etc., to, um, to have a full optimal comprehension of the current text. So what, what prior knowledge does it assume that the reader already has? And then the vocabulary, what type of vocabulary is being used? What is it is it, is, it, is, it, is it specific to a certain discipline? Is it a discourse that they um, need to be familiar with, et cetera? So all of these things can't be assessed by a computer. They need a human reader. And that is where our professional responsibilities as educators come in to really do a close reading of the text so that we can better understand what it's going to demand of our students. So there are some tools that can help with this. And these, um, these rubrics are helpful for evaluating the complexity, the qualitative elements. And they look at the text structure, the language features, meaning, knowledge demands, etc. And there are different versions for whether you're looking at literature or informational texts. And these rubrics are available on the course agenda and also on the course D2L. And these will be very helpful as you analyze the qualitative elements of your text. Then there is the third component, and that is the reader and task. And the reader and task is really focusing on the reader and the context. So what, is, what prior knowledge does the reader have? What previous experiences do they have that might be assets for helping them comprehend? What motivation and interest do they have? Again, as I said er earlier, the more motivation and interest a student has, the more willing he or she will be, a, will be to take on a more challenging, difficult text. And then looking at the task as well, what is your purpose of using this text? Is the purpose connect with a student's purpose? Is the, is the task um, easier or more difficult? These will impact the level of text um, that you might want to match with a student as well. And as with the qualitative elements, these are best evaluated by a teacher who knows the students. One thing to consider with reader and task is balancing the difficulty of the task with the difficulty of the text. So the more complex of a task that you're asking the students to do, if you're asking them to synthesize and analyze, then you want to consider choosing a less complex text. However, you can also consider the less complex of a task you're asking the students to do, then you can perhaps choose a more complex task. So striking that right balance with the reader and the task and the text can help you best match a text with a student in a task for, for the productive struggle. Other things to consider when selecting the text are cultural elements and relevance to the students. So I've included here a couple tools that can help you choose culturally relevant or meaningful texts. As we studied earlier in the semester, um, viewing and reading the Chris Emden work, we really want to choose texts that have purpose and connection to our students as well. So linked here in, and available on the course agenda and course D2L is a checklist created by Teaching for Tolerance that's really helping you to look at how diverse the text is and how it will connect with a variety of different students. Another resource that you may want to use is this culturally cultural relevance rubric or checklist that was put together by 
so a group of teachers that are very much promoting diverse texts in schools. And so basically it's a list of eight questions and you rank it one to four in terms of how well the content in the text connects with the reader. So these are some tools to help you choose a culturally relevant text. And this will be something you'll wanna do in your text set blog post as well. So this following video, just if you would like to watch it, you can provides a nice brief overview of the three elements of or the three dimensions of text complexity. So I encourage you to watch that if you'd like, and it, it offers a couple of examples too about analyzing text complexity. So all you need to do is click on the link and it will take you to the video. Um, you can't click on the link, of course, in this video, but the slides where they are available um, on the course agenda, when you watch them in that way, you can click on the link and it will take you to this video. So why should we bother learning all this text complexity? My purpose for teaching this to you and having you read about it and having you apply it to text within your discipline is not just to add a difficult task and make you jump hoops, but really it is about giving you the professional tools to do the work that you need to do. And this, this heuristic or approach to analyzing text can be used with a, a wide variety of texts. You can use it with um, visual texts, you can use it with video texts, you can use it with musical text. You can use it with a variety of texts. Just when it talks about text, you want to look at the sense of text in a, in a broad way. You, of course, can't use the computer analysis components of quantitative, but you can still use these other elements. And the more you have to analyze text, the more prepared you are to choose text and match them with your students. And as the demands of reading become more and more complex, in the workplace, unfortunately, the use of complex text is decreasing. Um, many of you brought up in class and in your discussions that oftentimes um, what we are doing is having students read less and less, that we're just taking out all the core information and presenting it in PowerPoints for them, and they aren't having to do the actual reading and the actual struggle with the text. So therefore, they're not getting that experience to grow in their reading and experience that productive struggle with reading and advance their reading skills. There's more information about that here at this reading if you'd like to go and read that more. So our goal then with using this, this text complexity dimensions to choose complex texts and tasks is really trying to strike that sweet spot of productive struggle, tapping into that, that zone of proximal development where it, the difficulty level is just above their level such that if they struggle to do it they can actually grow in it but is not too far advanced where they can't do it and they experience cognitive overload and just give up so it's really about finding that sweet spot and in the westling video she talks quite a bit about um, using text complexity as a tool set to step up the complexity in your text choices and how to find that right spot. So when you um, step up the complexity and you find it in that correct spot of where they're at and where the difficulty of the text is at in the task, you, the students can then slow down and grapple with the ideas and draw on their strategies and their tools for figuring out the answer. They can draw on their resources, they can reflect on their process, and they can hopefully experience success. All of these things will lead to them then growing and expanding in their abilities to, to read and therefore take on more complex texts in the future with more ease. So these are the reasons why we're learning about text complexity. So you have the tools to actually make professional, educated decisions about text and the task you want students to do. So as I put this out there, I do want you to know that there's controversy around text complexity as well. Um, there, there remains to be in schools and especially with standardized tests, too much focus on the quantitative measures. However, these quantitative measures are often very misleading. And Wessling talks a bit about this. Um, they're very misleading in the sense that they're only looking at number of words, length of sentence, et cetera. And these, this doesn't apply for a lot of texts. For example, the grapes of wrath if you use just quantitative measures, is rated as much is as rated as much more simple of a text than the Hunger Games. However, the themes and the content and the issues that are raised in the Grapes of Wrath is much more complex and much better placed and matched with mature, more advanced readers than the Hunger Games. So this is just one example of how looking at just quantitative, the numerical measures often calculated by computer programs is not enough. It's not enough for looking at the whole context, those three layers of comprehension. So that is, um, so keep that in mind that even though text complexity is trying to look at these broader concepts, there are a lot of situations in which it isn't being addressed. 
So now we will move into some practice and you can look at the second video which will take us through a text and practice analyzing that. Good luck.